Welcome to Rika Subtest 2 Online Test Preparation Course presented by RikaTest.com. In this section, we'll discuss elements of story grammar and systematic explicit instruction for these elements. The first element of story grammar is the character, who the story revolves around and follows. Teachers need to teach children to identify the protagonist, which is the main good character, and also the antagonist, who is the challenging character. The plot is the next narrative grammar point, which is what happens in a story. Specifically, the plot is the sequence of events that happen. The most common plot structure is introduction, conflict, rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution. The setting is the time and the place where the story takes place. The mood is largely influenced by the writer's style and is the way the story makes the reader feel. The feeling can arise from the writing style, font choice, color, and more. This might be cheerful, reflective, gloomy, humorous, whimsical, romantic, or many more. The theme of a story is the main idea or underlining meaning of a writer and what they explore in the novel. Common examples include good versus evil, love, redemption, courage, perseverance, coming of age, and revenge. These major elements of a story, when put together, form the story grammar. When presented with a task on your Rika test to teach narrative story grammar elements, use one of the following instructional strategies. You can use a story map or a story grammar outline. A story map is a scaffold that helps students map the story to increase their comprehension of what they read. A story grammar outline carries the same purpose as the story map, which is to help the students identify the elements of a story by taking note and enhancing their reading comprehension skills. An example of a standard story grammar outline looks like this. A simple outline form where the children write the parts of the story as they read or once they're finished reading the story. On Eureka Test Essays, you will not want to simply hand the children a story map or story grammar outline and say, all right, go complete it. Instead, you'll want to use this method that we've discussed throughout the course. It's called the gradual release of responsibility. And this is when the students use a step-by-step -step approach. So step number one is that the teacher models the demonstration by completing the story map or the story grammar outline for your students to see how you do it appropriately. Now make sure to use a think aloud approach. The Riga test scores will love it. This is a recurring term. Remember, think alouds are a key term to use for your essays and case study. Then perhaps in the next story, project the story map or the story grammar outline on the whiteboard or on chart paper, but ask for students to volunteer to come up and fill in the blanks. So this is when the teacher and the students, they complete the task together. Then finally, in the third lesson, the teacher lets the students complete the story map or the story grammar outline independently in order to demonstrate their ability to identify the parts of a story. In this next section, you'll learn explicit instructional strategies for narrative analysis. Let's talk about this now. This is the process of interpreting a text and literary criticism. Let's talk about this. This is the practice of judging the parts of a literary text. Your Rika test will prompt you with questions on teaching narrative analysis and literary criticism. Let's follow these five needs. First, identify the structural elements of a plot and evaluate their logic and credibility. Remember, we also need to compare and contrast the motivations and reactions of characters. Third, evaluate the relevance of the setting. Fourth, identify recurring themes. And fifth, identify elements of a writer's style, including the function and effect of an author's use for the figurative language. All of this might feel like a lot, but in fact, what you really need to remember for your Rika test is that you will either want to use a story map or a story grammar outline in order to teach 
narrative analysis. And remember that we always use the gradual release of responsibility model. So when you get asked a question, use the story grammar map or the story grammar outline. And one more time, use the gradual release of responsibility method. You'll do great. Feeling nervous about taking your RECA test? Click the link in the description below, get full access to this RECA test prep course, and start feeling prepared for test day.